Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our series on how to write a PSMT by looking at how to justify our decisions in our evaluation. And this is the ninth video in our series aimed at students of maths in Queensland. In this video, you're gonna find out firstly about the decisions you might've made in your PSMT. And you might be wondering to yourself, hang on a minute, I didn't make any decisions. Oh yes, you did. We'll find out what they are. And then we'll talk about some key definitions. We'll look at what mathematical reasoning is, some student samples, and then talk about what's coming up in the next couple of videos. Okay, let's get straight into it and look at our instrument specific marking guide, the ISMG. And we are focused on our top box at the moment and it's the last dot point in that box, justification of decisions. We need to be able to do that using mathematical reasoning to be able to hit the top four to five mark range. So let's talk about how to do that. What decisions? did you make in your assignment you might be asking well some of those key decisions could be things like sampling now if you're using any kind of statistical assignment whether it's univariate data or bivariate data then you would have potentially had to go and develop your own data or choose from a big data set a sample for yourself and if you've chosen from a big data set then you've had to choose a sampling method how did you choose the actual items out of the population you would have had to choose a sample size and also how to make that sample up so for an example let's say you had to do an assignment where you were looking at car prices versus their odometer readings or the age of the car or something like that well you might have gone onto the trading post online for example and you might have found that there were a hundred cars available and you might have made the decision to only look at automatic cars. Well, that's part of your sample composition. You've decided to filter out the manuals and only focus on the automatics. That's your decision. So you may have then chosen from the 50 automatic cars that you're gonna take a sample of 25. That's a decision that you made to take half the population. And then you may have decided to choose every second one. That is your sampling method. So you can see that's how decisions are made fairly early in your assignment and you've just made three of them okay you may have also um, made some decisions about what kind of model to develop so you may have decided to develop a linear model or a quadratic model or an exponential model or you may not have known what you were developing and then you discover through the data that that's the kind of model you have and the decision you're actually making is by examining the model and stating this is a linear model you have methods that you can use to confirm the decision and that's all about using your mathematical reasoning the way that you decided to represent your data for example if you were doing univariate data or statistics assignment you may have decided to represent the information in a pie chart or a column graph or a histogram however you decide to show your data is another choice that you've made it's a key decision You've, if you've decided to do some bivariate data analysis for your assignment and you've decided to graph something on the x-axis and graph something else on the y-axis, that's your independent variable and your dependent variable. Your choice of what you put where is also a decision that you've made. If you've got certain variables that you've decided to include or exclude or eliminate, that was another decision that you've made. Or if you decide to keep outliers in your data set or to um, exclude the outliers that's another decision that you've made so every one of these decisions we need to discuss and actually justify why we made that decision different techniques you use to estimate whether you used um, an algebraic model to make estimations or if you estimated off a graph the technique that you used is also a key decision that you've made so justification is all about giving reasons and evidence to support your answer and it's showing um, a, a conclusion of some sort of why something is reasonable so we need to actually justify every one of those decisions that we make using evidence otherwise it's just a statement of a decision so this is really important we need to give reasons why we did something that we did or why we chose to do something in a certain way and as you remember off the ISMG it needs to be mathematical reasoning so it's not just enough to say I decided to choose a sample of 30 because it was easy we actually need a mathematical reason why we chose a sample of 30. Now this mathematical reasoning can also be embedded throughout our assignment. It's not just in our evaluation at the end. So it's important to remember that when you make a decision at the beginning of your assignment, justify it there. If you make another decision when you've seen a graph and you've observed some different trends and you've decided something about a correlation, justify it there using mathematics. 
So here's an example of some mathematical reasoning that's justified in the formulate section of the assignment. The odometer reading was selected as the explanatory variable since it is assumed that, and it continues on, it's actually um, justified using some mathematical reasoning. But you can see this was early on in the assignment. In the formulate section, they've talked about why they chose this particular variable to be explanatory and the other variable to be the response variables. So that's a key decision. You can also make decisions in your solve section. So from the QCAA's annotated general maths um, sample PSMT, they've um, looked at the correlation, it's 0 0.302. They've used mathematical reasoning to decide why that is weak correlation, because it's close to zero. So they've given a reason why, and that's a decision they've made. They've decided that the correlation is weak. So that's something else you should be aware of as well, is that when you're observing those results and drawing a conclusion, that's a kind of decision when you're drawing that conclusion. Use mathematics to support that. Also, you can have some of that justification as well in your evaluation. So here we can see in also the same assignment from the QCAA that they're concluding that a linear model is appropriate for the study because the residual plot has scattered points on the particular graph. Now, if you're not studying this strand of mathematics, that's okay. You don't need to understand what a residual plot is. The point here that I'm trying to make is that you can also do mathematical reasoning in the evaluation as well. So it can be scattered throughout your whole assignment. Mathematical reasoning also includes the language that explains and elaborates your decision using a mathematical reason to support it. So here is an example from a student. As shown in figure one, the R value was between negative 0.5 and negative 0.75. So they've actually got a graph. I haven't provided that here. It's probably in your textbook if you're studying 11 general maths and 12 general maths. But in the, as shown in the figure, they've got evidence that supports their mathematical decision. Okay, so that's that evidence right there. The range is between those two numbers there from their figure one. Mathematical reasoning also includes showing every step of working. So it's really important that we don't skip our steps of working. So here from our math methods, PSMT, you can see that they've got all the steps of working. They've got some key words connecting um, the conclusions from each part and showing where the different calculations take a different direction. Mathematical reasoning also includes explanation of a process and why it's undertaken. Now, this is quite a chunky paragraph. You don't need to read the whole thing. But basically what um, the mathematical reasoning here is, is that they're explaining very briefly what a residual is. And then before they actually go in and draw the residual plot, they're explaining why they're doing it. They're talking about what a residual is, they're talking about what a residual plot is, and then how it will be used to determine if a model is linear or not. So this is the actual reasoning that goes behind the decision that's made. They've given some good mathematical explanation before they actually undertake the process. That's mathematical reasoning. Mathematical reasoning could also be verifying a process in a variety of ways. So in this particular example from the QCAA, they've used Desmos and they've also used calculus procedures. So they've used two different methods to confirm their results. And that is part of their mathematical reasoning. Mathematical reasoning can also be supporting your claim using a reference. So for example, here from the General Maths PSMT from the QCAA, they've got a reason why they've made their assumption. According to Medical News Today, students reach their full height by the age of 16. So it's an appropriate claim and they've supported that with a reference that supports it. And that's part of the mathematical reasoning. So mathematical reasoning is one of those things that's right throughout the assignment. Now I did get a question the other day from a teacher, um, actually two different teachers in different contexts asking me, what happens if I see good justification in this part of the assignment and in this part of the assignment there's no justification at all or it's actually contradictions of the previous parts of the assignment. And the way that we need to be looking at this as teachers is, is it mathematically um, reasoned and justified on balance? So if we've made five decisions in the assignment and four of those have been justified with mathematical reasoning and one is simply a statement, well then on balance, four out of five, the student has shown mathematical reasoning for their justified decisions. However, if they've made five decisions and only one of them has been justified or even two of them have been justified and three have not, well then on balance that student isn't justifying their decision. So it's really important that we look at the overall picture of an assignment 
as teachers and that on overall on balance the student has met that criteria okay let's look at some more examples now of people who've justified the decisions i have justified my decisions purely based on calculations and hope i've not made any mistakes in my thinking that's a great example qcaa you actually need to write about the, the decisions that you've made don't just say i justified them actually justify them as you are going preferably when and as you make those decisions so it's a great idea to have if you've got in for example in your formulate section of your assignment where you've talked about your sample size and you decided to choose a sample size of 30. well it's a good place right there and then to explain why 30. how did you come about the number 30 rather than leaving it to the end of the assignment where it could potentially be missed so keep your decision and the explanation for the decision together Here's another student example. Systematic sampling was chosen to be used because it's easier to explain in a report context. Now they've given a reason, but it's not a mathematical justification. So really, it falls into the category of a statement of decision as opposed to a justification of decision. Remember um, from the ISMG that decisions do need to be justified mathematically. Um, so this is not a mathematical reason, it's a statement of a decision. A sample size of 30 was chosen to be suitable with every car, second car chosen. Well, there's been no reason given here. It's just a statement of a decision. There's no justification at all. Another student example, in order to graph and, and develop the model, um, let X be the odometer reading, let Y be the price. Once again, just a statement. No reason was given as to why they made that decision. So yes, it was a decision. It's a statement of decision. Here's another one. The figure is a scatter plot created excluding outliers. Four outliers were identified from the scatter plot. These were removed in this figure. By removing the outliers, the R squared value was increased, making the data more valid and improving the goodness of fit. They've explained why they made that decision to remove the outliers. That's a mathematical justification. Now, sometimes teachers might argue they shouldn't have removed the outliers at all. Um, okay, that's fair enough. Then that would be not a discerning application of mathematical techniques from solve. In this case, it would be um, still that they've justified their and evaluated their decision using a mathematical reasoning. So therefore, it may not be valid in one part of the assignment, but it's definitely valid here for evaluation. Well, that's all we have time for here today. I hope this has been really helpful for you to work out what decisions you've made in your assignment and the fact that you actually need to explain and elaborate on those. And if you did find this helpful, why not like and subscribe to McClatchy Maths, hit the notifications button so you'll always know when there's new videos and please tell someone that you have found a great channel and it's really helpful to you with writing your PSMT. Why not tell us in the comments as well? And if you've got any questions whatsoever, you can always contact us at McClatchyMaths at yahoo.com or direct messages on Facebook Facebook and Instagram. Always up to answer your questions and help with anything you need help with. Well, my name's Natalie McClatchy. You've been watching McClatchy Mass. Do stay tuned for our upcoming two videos on communication. Have a wonderful day.